So, so thank you very much uh, for having me. Uh, it's uh, it's a pity I couldn't be there in person. Let's hope that the the situation that is brought to this uh, is gonna improve soon. Uh, so this talk is about uh, the, I think a relatively unexplored debate in the philosophy of logic, which concerns what uh, what are the, the things that uh, stand in the rela relational logical consequence? What are, What is the kind of entity that stands in the relation of logical consequence? Uh, and we refer to these as the bearers of logical consequence. Um, and, and basically my aim uh, in this talk is to uh, um, put forth the question and uh, try to answer it by defending that the, at least the primary logical consequence bearers are sentences hmm? understood as abstract linguistic entities. Uh, so more in details, uh, more in detail, the talk uh, is structured as follows. In the first section, uh, briefly gonna present uh, uh, how to understand uh, the debate on logical consequence bearers. Uh, and then in the next two sections, I'm, I'm gonna offer criticism to the uh, two main uh, candidates for being uh, logical consequence bearers. Uh, in order, propositions uh, and utterances, where propositions are understood as usual as abstract, non-linguistic entities, uh, contents, uh, whereas utterances are understood as concrete uh, uh, events uh, like speech acts. Uh, and after I uh, criticize these two candidates for being logical consequence bearers, I uh, uh, mainly by elimination, I'm gonna conclude uh, that we should take uh, sentences as logical consequence bearers. Okay, so uh, so I apologize that the slides have a lot of material that uh, because of a lack of time, I'm really not gonna be able to go through. So it's, uh, um, uh, can you see my pointer? Yes. Yes. So I'm, I'll try with my pointer to indicate where I'm on the slides, but mainly just listen to me. Okay. So we are all familiar with the debate uh, in tr in the, um, on truth uh, concerning which kind of entities uh, can be true, uh, which kind of entities are the truth bearers. And here we have uh, different candidates, uh, sentences, uh, propositions, utterances, and many others. Uh, so I myself, in that debate, I'm inclined to uh, take a pluralist view. I think that uh, we can make sense uh, uh, the many uh, uh, of these kinds of entities uh, can be true. Sentences can be true, propositions can be true, utterances can be true, and so on. Uh, but it's still a question, even once one, take this, one, once one takes this pluralist stance, uh, there's still a question of whether and which are the primary uh, truth bearers, by which I mean, uh, uh, the truth bearers to which the, the notion of truth is most fundamentally and systematically applied to, and on the basis of which the application of truth to the other truth bearers must be explained. So there's still this question. Uh, similarly, uh, when we move to the debate about logical consequences, there seems to be space uh, for a similar questions. What are the logical consequence bearers? The, the kinds of entities that uh, can stand in the relation of logical consequences. Here as well, I think we have uh, uh, several candidates, at least uh, the ones I'll be focusing on in this talk, uh, propositions, utterances, um, and sentences, uh, possibly other ones as well. Uh, here again, I'm very happy to take a pluralist view about uh, logical consequence bearers in themselves. I think we can make sense of uh, uh, many of these uh, kinds of entities uh, standing in, uh, in relations of uh, logical consequence. But then again, I'm, what I'm really interested in this talk is where, whether and which are the primary uh, logical consequence bearers. The... So, uh, this is the, the setup. Uh, let me now uh, move on to uh, propositions and I'll offer uh, basically three arguments against propositions. Uh, uh, the first argument uh, is really uh, the propositions are not fine grained enough to capture uh, all the fine details that we need when theorizing about logical consequence. 
here uh, just move to this uh, uh, third uh, point on the slide. Uh, so for example, uh, so I'm gonna refer to, since uh, it's an open question, which are the logical consequence, the primary logical consequence bearers. I'm gonna uh, refer to those, whatever they are, uh, by putting a sentence uh, inside corner quotes. Uh, so for example, uh, uh, the NATO is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization that on any decent uh, understanding or proposition, that there must be the same proposition as NATO is NATO. Uh, but the two things are very different from a logical perspective. Uh, NATO is NATO is a logical formal, is a logical formal truth, uh, is a logical truth true uh, merely in virtue of uh, identity. Whereas NATO is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization is not a formal logical truth. It's not true merely in virtue of identity. So we're not gonna, this is a crucial logical distinction, but it's not a distinction that we can draw at the level of uh, propositions. Second argument against uh, propositions uh, concerns the question, uh, once we, uh, consider context dependence in the language, uh, the question arises of which propositions we should really take uh, as being logical truth, for example. Uh, so an actual proposal uh, for addressing this question uh, starts as follows. Let's, uh, let's say that something is a, a, a sentence is a logical truth star, if it's a logical truth according to people that think the sentences uh, can be logical truth. Uh, uh, then we can uh, formulate a natural proposal for saying which propositions are logical truth by saying the uh, proposition is a logical truth if and only if in some context the proposition is expressed by a sentence of some possible language, there is a logical truth star. So this is a, this is a natural proposal. It, it, it takes many things uh, uh, right, but also uh, many things uh, wrong. The, I think one of the main problem is the following. Uh, I'm gonna be assuming that uh, the biconditional P if and only if actually P, that that's a logical truth star. Uh, but if that's a logical truth star, uh, given uh, the proposal we are given, you can easily see that has the result that whenever P uh, uh, express is a metaphysically possibly a true sentence, uh, then we're gonna have a, a consequence uh, that uh, there's a logical truth that is modal equivalent uh, with the proposition expressed by P. Uh, by modal equivalent, I mean true in the same, in exactly the same uh, possible words. So for example, there is gonna be a logical truth, uh, and that's because, uh, I mean, we can go into that in discussion, that's simply because of the way uh, the logic of actually is uh, standardly supposed to work. Uh, so that is, the, that is the consequence. For example, since noise white is metaphysically possible, there's gonna be uh, a logical truth that is modally equivalent with noise white, but also noise is not white is metaphysically possible. So there's gonna be uh, a logical truth that is modally equivalent with uh, snow is not white. That, that already seems uh, repugnant, it's even more repugnant once we consider that even in this, on this proposal, the conjunction of these two propositions is not gonna be a logical truth because it's not gonna be true in any world at all, it's a contradiction. Uh, so we're gonna have the result, uh, the logical truths uh, are not closed under conjunction. Uh, so uh, there are other proposals to be made for the identification of uh, which propositions are, um, uh, should, should count as logical truth. Uh, we can run out of time now, uh, we can leave that for discussion. Uh, let me move to the third uh, argument against proposition. This has to do with the fact that there seems to be lots of cases of logical consequence where there are no propositions around. So let me give you two kinds of examples to substantiate uh, this point. One, one comes from an indicative uses of language. Well, we, we could make uh, the point already with cases of reference failure where no proposition is expressed plausibly, but there still seems to be reasoning and logical consequence going on. But let me take uh, 
Let me focus on, a, on another example that might be more interesting. Uh, is a case of reasoning with open sentences uh, where we simply take an arbitrary object and then we reason uh, about that. Uh, so here you have an example. For example, we can suppose the X uh, is, a, is an arbitrary uh, number and suppose the X is prime and then we can infer, we, we suppose another, there's another arbitrary uh, number Y uh, and then we infer from X is prime that either X is prime or, or Y is even. Uh, so the, the, this kind of reasoning with, uh, with, no re with no determined reference, just taking an arbitrary object of a certain kind, that's totally widespread in mathematics and in many other sciences. And it's also uh, by using pronouns instead of uh, variables, that, that's also extremely common uh, in ordinary life. Uh, and so, so it certainly seems to be reasoning about that and therefore logical consequence. Uh, but it's very implausible to think that these entities express propositions because they don't have a, a sign of reference. They, uh, they're incomplete, so they don't express, they don't simply express a complete proposition. So we have a case where, again, we have a logical consequence, but we don't have propositions. Uh, another kind of case, it's more, more radical and even more, more simple, if you want, comes from uh, non-indicative uses of language. Let, let me focus on imperative sentences. Uh, uh, yeah, again, it seems uh, quite plausible for you that there is a logic of commands. So for example, we can, it seems very plausible that the command open the door and open the window uh, entails uh, the command open the door. Uh, but as we know from the philosophy of language, it's very implausible to think that this, um, uh, these commands uh, express uh, propositions. And a similar point could have been made with interrogative sentences and uh, logical questions, uh, but uh, I'll leave that for uh, discussion. So that concludes my uh, three arguments uh, against proposition. Now let, propositions. Now let me move on to other three arguments against uh, utterances, speech acts. Uh, so first argument is that basically that there are too few utterances for uh, our intuitive conception of logical consequence. Uh, uh, um, uh, there are intuitive, there are many, even most logical truths uh, have never and will never be uttered. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, uh, if we, if we, if utterances were the primary logical consequence bearer, the, 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 we, we would have the surprising results that there are only finitely many uh, logical truth, which is quite um, uh, implausible and uh, problematic in many respects, you can imagine. Uh, uh, second argument, that, that's related to the second argument against proposition. That's the question, once we have context dependence in the language, which exactly uh, uh, should be the utterances that are taken to stand in a relation or logical consequence. Now, here again, we have a natural proposal. Uh, uh, let's say that uh, uh, a conclusion logically follows star from premises, uh, if there are sentences, just in case uh, the conclusion logically follows from those sentences, according to people that think uh, the sentences are logical consequence bearers, then we can uh, formulate the natural proposal by saying that the uh, uh, a conclusion utterance follows from premise utterances, if and only if uh, the, uh, the sentence uh, that the conclusion utterance is an utterance of logically follows star from the sentences that the uh, premise utterances are an utterances of. Uh, so this is, again, is a natural proposal, um, gets many things right, but also gets many things wrong. Uh, for example, consider my utterance of I'm Elia and your utterance of I'm not Elia. From those, given this natural proposal, everything follows. But that's problematic because uh, both uh, utterances uh, are true, are, uh, uh, are, um, are known, are justified, uh, and so on. Uh, so we would have, uh, if we think that they entail everything, we would have uh, massive failures of... Um, 
closure principles and the logical consequence of closure of uh, uh, justified acceptance, closure of knowledge, uh, closure of truth, uh, closure of necessity, etc. Uh, so that's uh, that seems uh, at odds with the role we want logical consequence uh, to play. So here again, there, there will be other uh, interesting proposals to make, but let's leave them for discussion. Uh, the, the third argument, uh, I guess, utterances, uh, is that uh, um, it starts from the observation that there are uh, uh, logical true stars uh, that can be uttered falsely. Uh, so, for example, take uh, the sentence, if Davis here, then Davis here. Uh, I can utter that that seems a logical truth, but I can utter that falsely if I, uh, in the first uh, 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 occurrence of here in the antecedent, I demonstrate uh, a place where they be standing, but in the occurrence of here in the consequent, I'm demonstrate a place where Dave is not standing, that my utterance uh, is going to be false. Uh, so I think that's a fact that we should uh, learn to live with, uh, but it's extremely problematic once we take uh, utterance is to be the primary logical consequence bearers because then, the, the, then we would have the uh, absurd result. There are some logical truths, let me an utterance of if Davis here, then Davis here, that is actually false. So it's both a logical truth, but it's also false uh, simpliciter. Okay, and again, I think that's uh, 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 obviously uh, problematic. So that concludes my arguments. Uh, against utterances, uh, we already saw the one about uh, propositions. So uh, by elimination, uh, I would say that we better uh, uh, take sentences as primary logical consequence bearers. Uh, uh, interesting, if you think about uh, all the arguments have been, all the six arguments have been given uh, against propositions and utterances, it's very striking the sentences don't suffer uh, from any of, uh, of those problems. Uh, so sentences really seem to provide uh, the best, the smoothest framework uh, for developing uh, philosophical theory of uh, logic. Uh, there's also, a, a, apart from this main argument by elimination, there's also a, a supplementary methodological consideration to be made in favor of sentences, which is that, uh, uh, while philosophers often mm, talk about proposition as the barriers of logical consequence, if you look at people that really do logic, logicians, they almost invariably uh, work with sentences um, as um, a logical consequence barriers. Uh, so this presents methodological challenges if we want to take something other than sentences as um, primary logical consequence better, because first we would really have to uh, uh, try to replicate all the results the logicians have obtained uh, about logics of sentences in the framework of say propositions or utterances or whatever. And it's extremely unclear that all of uh, the interesting results that we have are gonna carry, carry through technically once we work in these other frameworks. I mean, the, the examples we discussed earlier are, are an early indication that that's probably not gonna be possible. And secondly, uh, uh, if we take something other than sentences as uh, logical consequence, primary logical consequence bearers, then uh, they would have the at least uh, impalatable uh, consequence. Uh, they will, will be saying that uh, the expert on logics, logicians uh, are, uh, deeply wrong about uh, what their primary object of study is, which I think is something that, uh, if possible, uh, should be better avoided. Okay, so I finish with the main part of the talk. Let me uh, close by uh, uh, making some broader reflection on, on uh, what's been going on and draw some uh, more speculative, uh, but maybe even more interesting conclusions. Uh, uh, if you think about that, uh, many of the arguments uh, I've been using uh, feature crucially some form or other of context uh, dependence. Uh, and then that's quite interesting because if you think about the truth debate, the uh, context dependence is actually used 
uh, to argue that um, sentences cannot be uh, the primary truth bearers. Uh, whereas uh, in, in my case, I've used uh, many issues relating to context dependence to argue the sentences are the uh, primary logical consequence bearers. Uh, uh, so we can take a one step further here. So if uh, sentences are the uh, logical consequence bearers, the primary logical consequence bearers, but are not the primary truth bearers, then uh, you, might, you might expect that uh, some important divergence between logical consequence on the one end and truth on the other end is gonna emerge uh, because of this uh, different behavior of sentences with respect to logical consequence and truth. Uh, and in fact, if, if you look at, the, at almost all uh, the examples I gave in, in this talk, uh, yeah, these examples confirm this expectation that there is a substantial divergence between logical consequence uh, and truth. Uh, so I think uh, that uh, to me, at least uh, one of the interesting upshots of this investigation of the uh, primary logical consequence on uh, how this interacts with context depend. One interesting upshot is that uh, uh, perhaps unexpected and, and very interesting uh, gap emerges between uh, logical consequence uh, and truth and related notions like truth preservations, uh, truth preservation and so on. Okay, so that was my talk. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot. I look forward to the discussion. That's a little bit of bibliography. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Leo. Uh, well, does anyone have questions? Well? I see a raised hand by Susanna. Susanna, please. Um, hi, thank you so much. That was very interesting. Thank you. I don't really have any significant question. It's mostly just clarificatory because I feel like so much is going on in this talk and I'm not sure if I just understood everything. So you say that um, this distinction even between sentences and propositions and utterances, I feel like I just don't fully understand why, for example, there is this problem of utterances when you say, if Dave is here, Dave is here, but there, it won't be a problem if we treat it as a sentence and not an utterance. All right, thank you. Uh, let's move back to the, thank you. So the, pro uh, the problem is that the, uh, um, okay, so suppose we, we now take sentences to be the, um, uh, the primary logical consequence better. So, so in that case, uh, the sentence, if the like the abstract linguistic entity that is not uh, necessarily acted by anyone, but right? simply the abstract uh, uh, entity, that sentence, if Davis here, Davis here, that's going to be a logical truth. Yeah. Uh, uh, then, what is uh, what can be what is false? Like the, the utterance I described earlier, uh, that's the utterance. So it's going to be a different a different object that is false simpliciter. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to have one object that is a logical truth, namely the sentence, and then we're going to have another object that is a false simpliciter, namely the the strange utterance that I described earlier. So I think uh, I mean that there might. It still might, I understand it still might be uh, a bit counterintuitive or surprising that uh, there is a logical truth uh, that can be uttered uh, falsely, but I think uh, we, we, can, uh, we, can learn to, we can learn to live with that. Or at least uh, that's, uh, much that's more plausible uh, than uh, what would happen if we take utterances. Uh, to be primary logical consequence parents. Because in that case, uh, given at least the natural proposal, mm -hmm. uh, that very utterance would have to count as a logical truth. So the very, uh, the, very the, the strange utterance I described earlier, that they would have to count both as a logical truth and at the same time as being false simpliciter. So we would have the same object, one and the same object, they would both be a logical truth and uh, be a full simpliciter. And I think that's, uh, uh, that's, 
that's much less plausible than the description of the situation that we can give uh, if we take sentences uh, to be logical, primary logical consequence bearers. Does it help? Uh, yes, it does. I feel like I probably have to think about it a bit more, but um, well, thank you. Thanks for the question. Does anyone else have questions? It seems that we have no questions for Liam.